video will discuss an approach of how to perform a point-of-care ultrasound ocular exam in the pediatric patient. There are a multitude of reasons to perform a pediatric ocular POCUS exam. The most common is to assess for papilledema, such as in a child with headache or in a child with a VP shunt. Another indication is in the assessment of a trauma patient for pathology such as foreign body, retinal detachment, vitreous hemorrhage, and lens dislocation. If an abnormal red reflex is visualized, you may use POCUS to determine if there is an orbital mass, such as a retinoblastoma. Whether in the traumatic or infectious patient, a child may have a swollen eye. In this case, POCUS may be used to assess for ocular movements. In addition, it is possible to see pupillary reflex. There is no assessment of visual acuity or visual field using POCUS. In addition, it does not replace advanced imaging such as CT or MRI when they are indicated. The only contraindication is in the case of a globe rupture, where you risk the added pressure potentially further injuring the eye. Ocular ultrasound aids in the clinical practice in multiple manners. It has improved visualization of the optic nerve to determine papilledema versus the physical exam via fundoscopy. In addition, it can aid in triaging ophthalmology consultations from the emergency department with direct visualization of ocular pathology, including retinal detachment, vitreous hemorrhage, vitreous detachment, ocular form body, and ocular mass. In cases where the eye is swollen and unable to open, for example due to trauma or infection, ultrasound can be used to visualize the eye and determine ocular movements. The equipment required to perform an ocular POCUS exam is minimal. You will require the ultrasound machine with a high-frequency linear transducer. The high-frequency linear transducer is the most commonly used because it has a large footprint and has a high frequency allowing for detail at a low depth. Other linear transducers with a smaller footprint may be used. Ensure to have a great amount of gel for the ocular exam. Tegoderms are required to cover the eye. In order to optimize your exam, have objects that will engage your child with you such as toys, a phone, or the TV. As with all pediatric exams, the overall approach begins when you enter the room. It may be frightening to a young child to see a large machine enter the room. Position the machine so that the child can see it, but it's not right beside the bed or the child. After your history and physical exam are complete, move the machine beside the child. And turn the machine in position to optimize your comfort and scanning ability. Have the machine and the child in the same eye line. This ensures you can watch the screen, touch the buttons, and examine the child comfortably. In terms of the child's position, they may be on the bed themselves or in the parent's lap. If the child is not sitting on a parent, have the parent beside the child to give them comfort. Before scanning the child, introduce them to the machine in the probes. Manners to do this included, but are not limited to, showing the child the probe and jelly, allowing the child to touch the probe and jelly, putting a dry probe on yourself, the parent, or the child's body in another location than the eye, allowing the child to put jelly on themselves, showing the child the tegaderm and demonstrating on yourself how you're going to put it on. You may also decrease the child's anxiety by giving them some autonomy during the scan and asking them which eye they would prefer to start with. Having an object that the child enjoys watching or the TV on that the child can watch may alleviate some of their anxiety. At times, none of these me methods will work and the parent may need to hold the child's arms and head in a similar manner to facilitating a throat or ear exam. The optimal position is to have the child recline to 45 degrees, but if the child will not cooperate, you may have to scan with the child sitting at 90 degrees, lying down at 180 degrees, or somewhere in the middle. As you can see in this video, the most common technique is to place the ultrasound machine to the patient's right, similar to medical physical exam convention. From this position, be sure to place your finger on the child's nose or cheek to stabilize your hand. Another option is to stand behind the patient. In this manner, you can place your palm or finger on the child's forehead. You may get more stability in this position if the child is moving a great deal. Either bring the height of the bed up or sit beside the bed so you're not leaning over or on the child. As the eye is a mucous membrane, we use a tegoderm to cover the eye before scanning. This ensures that gel does not enter the child's eye that the probe does not contact a mucous membrane, and it facilitates cleanup. Other sites may not use a tegoderm. Discuss the need for a tegoderm at your center with your infection control department. Use a size large enough to cover the entire eye and surrounding orbit. This prevents gel from getting into the patient's eye. 
Cover one eye at a time to help comfort the child as they can still see out of the uncovered eye. To facilitate removal, leave the paper outer edge on. Common questions from the families are, will the tegoderm removal be painful or remove my child's eyelashes or eyebrows? The answer is no. The removal does not cause pain, especially when removed in the direction of hair growth. Removal does not pull out hair, but it does potentially remove makeup, which may be something to mention to teenagers. You may use a new tegoderm for each eye, or you may move the tegoderm from the first eye to the second. It's important to use the ocular preset. This is because it will have a low thermal and mechanical index. There is a theoretical risk of causing ocular injury, for example cataracts, if the thermal index is greater than 1 or the mechanical index is greater than 0.23. There are two views per eye to obtain for the POCUS ocular scan, longitudinal and transverse. In order to obtain the ocular transverse view, the probe is placed horizontally over a single eye. Remember to anchor your hand on the patient to gain optimal control for minute movements and to avoid putting high pressure on the eye. Use larger movements to find the globe, and then use small movements to find the optic nerve and structures of interest. In order to assess for papilledema, the ideal view is where the optic nerve hits the back of the retina. From that point, scan on either side of the optic nerve. This is achieved by micro movements of sliding and fanning. In addition, this view is optimal to assess lateral and medial extraocular movements. To obtain the ocular longitudinal view, the probe is placed vertically over the single eye. Remember to anchor your hand on the patient. Again, Use larger movements to find the globe, and then use small movements to find the optic nerve and structures of interest. This view is optimal to assess superior and inferior extraocular movements. When the scan is complete for the initial eye, then repeat the transverse and longitudinal views of the other eye. In both views, you can visualize the gross anatomy of the eye, including the anterior chamber, posterior chamber, iris, lens, retina, optic nerve, and optic nerve sheath. Here are some tips and tricks to help you optimize your pediatric ocular scan. To minimize discomfort and injury, scan with a large amount of gel and use minimal pressure upon the globe. Remember to engage the child with multiple methods to de decrease their anxiety. This includes, but is not limited to showing them the machine and gel prior to touching them with the probe. Use methods of comfort for the child such as parental involvement and objects to distract them such as TV or toys. Consider using a tegoderm to cover the eye. Positioning is important. Consider scanning the child from the behind using the forehead as an anchoring point. We hope you picked up a few skills that will aid in your scanning approach. Happy scanning.